So at the time of filming this video, kids around the world are staying home from school, but you still have to do your schoolwork. It sucks, I know, we have to do it. So I thought in this video I'd share with you what I've learnt from my experience with over six years of homeschooling, and yeah, done correctly, these will definitely help you work more efficiently. So first of all, I suggest to plan your projects. Now you want to have all the details, all the information that your teacher gives you in one place. You want to know the subject that it's in and the status of the project. I like to use an app called Trello. You can also use Notion, it's free for students if you have an email that ends in .edu or something like that. The main reason I use Trello though is because it's simple and it's the Kanban view that I'm looking for. If you prefer to use paper, you can use something that's kind of like a bullet journal. You basically just have to list all the subtasks and all the information and the status of the project. Pretty much the same as in Trello, just on paper. So whatever you choose to use, like I said earlier, make sure you can see the status, the information, all the subtasks and everything to do with the project. So inside of my Trello account, I have a main board called Current Projects, where I can see at a bird's eye view all my projects. These projects can be school related or YouTube related or anything else. I just make sure I add a label so I know what they're related to. And then I also label them with either behind or ahead. Now if you want to, you can have a separate board for school projects and a separate board for all other projects. But for me, having all projects in one spot just gives me peace of mind that I'm not going to forget anything. Inside of these cards, I have a link that goes to the board for that specific project. And I also have any details that I might need to know at a glance. So whatever you choose to do, make sure you pick a system that works best for you and stick to that system, which is, it's always important to stick to your system, otherwise, if you keep changing it like I have in the past, everything gets messed up and you have to end up changing things, which wastes time. So my second tip for you would be to schedule your day. Now, to me, scheduling your day is just as important, or even more important, than having a to-do list. The main reason is because it adds that time dimension. I know when the task needs to be completed and for how long it's going to take. Also, when I schedule my day, I realise that I can't get everything on my to-do list done, and it forces me to prioritise. I'm also less likely going to fall into what's known as Parkinson's Law, which goes, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Basically, the amount of time you give each task is going to be how long it takes for you to complete that task. So, scheduling a lot, like scheduling a whole morning to complete a small task is not a good idea because that task is going to end up taking that long because you know that you have enough time to complete it. So there are two different ways you can schedule your day. There's either using an app or something like a bullet journal. The main advantages of using an app is that you can toggle on or off different calendars and you can also colour code different events. What I've done is I've created a main calendar where I have all my events that involve me going somewhere or someone coming over here and then I have a daily schedule calendar in which I have all my tasks and then I colour code those tasks depending on what they're related to. Last of all, I have an information calendar in which I list things like my brother having a friend over or my mum going food shopping. This allows me to better prepare my own schedules to fit around that. So if you prefer to use something paper-based, you can go with a bullet journal. The main disadvantages of this is that you can't toggle on and off different calendars, but it is more customizable than an app. The main reason I've stopped using a bullet journal is that I'm not that good at art, so I can't customize it and make it look pretty. So yeah, whichever one you choose to use, go and schedule your day. You can either do it every morning or the night before. It's definitely a good idea because you've come to realize that you actually have time for other things that you thought you never had time for before. But it also, like I said earlier, it forces you to prioritize. So yeah, go ahead and schedule your day and let's get into the next tip. So one thing that's helped me immensely to focus and get ready for each day is having a morning routine. This morning routine allows me to focus on new hobbies, new habits, and basically what I find is important. So the most important part of creating a morning routine is to prepare the night before. This could mean placing a glass of water on your bedside table, getting a book ready, or getting your gym clothes out and ready for the morning. Anything that makes your morning smooth and easy with less decisions. This also means going to sleep at the same time each night. If you go to sleep at irregular times, you're going to find that you wake up more and more tired and more energy is drained. So second, you want to wake up at the same time each morning. You also don't want to hit that snooze button because you're admitting defeat to the very first goal you set for yourself that day. So the last step to creating a morning routine is to choose which activities you want to do, what things you want to do in it, what hobbies, what habits you want to start. It could be as simple as waking up and going and eating breakfast. I mean, that could be your hobby, eating breakfast if you want to. But um, 
I definitely suggest starting at least a few other habits, a few hobbies you can do. Uh, what I like to do is I wake up and go for a run to get my cardio in, and then I come back, have a cold shower, of course, and then I pray, read my Bible, devotional, and of course I go down and eat breakfast. I usually make fried eggs and toast. This morning I actually tried to make French toast. I say tried because I don't think I did it right, but it tasted good, so that's a, that's a bonus. Um, I also sometimes make smoothies, so anything that's healthy, go and eat something healthy. That's very important. But yeah, some other ideas you might want to try are reading, writing. I've actually started that recently. Today, actually, this morning, I started writing two or three pages in my journal just to brain dump and learn to get my ideas in clear text and... Yeah, so it's easily read. You can either start writing, reading, running, like I always do, workouts, or something else. Just anything that you find interesting. Of course, it's a system of trial and error, so you can try things, and if they don't work out, just don't do them and try something else. So my fourth tip for you is to create a dedicated space for schoolwork. The main reason is because it increases your focus. If you're doing your schoolwork on your bed or something like that, you're probably going to be more distracted to just, you know, lie down and enjoy watching YouTube or something. You might be doing that right now. In fact, I'm guessing you're probably on your bed wishing you were finished doing your schoolwork, just watching a video on how to do your schoolwork. Keep watching though, because, you know, these tips are going to help you, so, yeah. Now, if you have a spare room in your house, you're very lucky. I don't. Have a, if you have a spare room in your house, go and create an office that you can dedicate to your schoolwork and don't allow your phone in there if you can uh, because that will distract you. But if you can't, like me, you might want to do it in your bedroom and what you will want to do is split it so you have your bed in one side and then your desk in another. Make sure you have as much natural light as you can because that's a, that's a bonus. But uh, another idea that I got from Thomas Frank is you can also do something like in your living room, move things around each morning as part of your morning routine, and then when you finish your schoolwork, moving it back to how it was before. The main reason this idea works so well is that it creates a definite kind of line or divider of when your schoolwork starts and when it ends and when it's time for fun. So my final tip for you is to get some exercise. The main reason is because it increases your focus and improves your energy levels and, I mean, we all know it keeps you healthy. So try to get some cardio in at least two or three times a week. Uh, what I like to do is I do it every morning, like I said, in my morning routine, I go for a run. And on the weekends, I just go for a walk, get some air, because it's always important to get some air in the sunlight, of course, is very important, gives you that vitamin D. So now, if you want some tips for disciplining yourself to go out there and do it, what I suggest doing is tracking your progress, mainly because you don't want to break that streak and it just encourages you to keep going. Another thing to do is to schedule this into your day, of course that's very important, especially if you schedule your entire day, if you don't put it in there you're not going to do it. And last of all, reward yourself, because this is going to make you want to do it more, and next time you do it, it's going to make you want to do it more and more. I don't know why I just kept saying stuff, but you get the point. Yeah. If you want some more tips on motivation or self-discipline, you can check out one of them here. I'll leave both of them in the description, or you can just check them out on my channel page. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, if you did smash that like button, and also subscribe if you want to see the next video in this two part series, I'm going to be talking a bit more about techniques like the Pomodoro technique, also share this video with your friends because I mean we're all struggling with the same thing, if you're not used to doing school from home it is pretty hard, um, but yeah, see you guys in the next video, God bless.